Sup, powerful nonsenses. Hello. We are here for episode one, two, three. Yes, we are. Doesn't happen all the time, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, Sequential. That's, cool. that's, that's fun. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, be gentle with me. He's been on a stag do. I've returned from a stag do. That is so brave of you to actually come on and podcast, and we're going to crack out in three episodes. That's a brave man right there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so the next, this one and the next, the following two are all being recorded today whilst I'm recovering from... Alcoholism. Alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> and strippers. And <laughs> significant lack of strippers, actually. Horrendous. We're, we're, are we for strippers or against strippers on this podcast? <laughs> No um, comment. <laughs> if it's if that's the lifestyle they want to build, exactly, then that's up to them. I'm not going <laughs> to judge anyone. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty and I've, just, and I've just been traveling about. Yeah. Germany, Slovenia, lovely places. What were the other two you've been to? Tokyo, uh, Center Parks. <laughs> Center Parks. <laughs> just leave that one out. <laughs> no joking. It was fun in Center Parks. It was good. 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 So um, you're looking as energetic as ever, Wayne. I, I, look, I'm sleep deprived. I'm still mildly hungover. <laughs> and you're gonna make a good episode, hopefully. And I'm gonna try my best. Um, so we've got. Shall we intro ourselves? Oh yeah. You may as well do this podcast on your own today. I'm not gonna lie. I'm Jemmy Odis, and this is Wayne Ingram. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is episode one, two, three. Yes. And we're going to talk about friends. 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 Podcast friends. No one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh yeah, clap. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You did the clap. So you're on point. You, uh, you, you see, are there. Yeah. There is a light behind those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> those dead, dead <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you can see the veins like trying to pulse the alcohol out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes. we're talking about friends and, and why they're important. Y- yeah, why they matter. See, you're on it as well. I am on it. There we go. Or maybe you just appear more on it because I'm not so yeah, on it. I'm just going to jump in every time I think you're going to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we're talking about why friends are important. So mm-hmm. uh, Gem, why do you, why do friends matter? <laughs> Mainly because it makes you. You're gonna do like the essay question thing where you just go, one sentence answer. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. Done. But we are gonna be a little serious, aren't we? And we're gonna talk about friendships. We're always serious, Jim. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So we've got a lot of things to cover today. Yes. The main point being that friends you're just are good. like completely dodging the question. dodging the question because <laughs> you always throw like the most broad question of you. Gro- you throw like the whole podcast question yeah. at me in one go. Yeah. And then we have so many points to just talk. It about. means then you have to do all the work. And I don't. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, let's go with our first point yes. we've got here. And I think one of this is quite an important one, and it's about how friends give you a reality check, which I think is really important because I think, even like today, when we got chatting again, I'm mm-hmm. telling you what I'm getting up to, and you're like, Gem, that's a bit not, that's not like you, Gem. That's, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's the right move. And so I think one thing that I think friends are really great with is mm-hmm. that, especially when you're doing something that they think is against your character Mm -hmm. and so they're going to tell you about it whereas I think a lot of the time people probably have like people pleasing friends people who are kind of like shallow friends Mm -hmm. to you and they won't tell you about yourself when you're getting wrong yeah but then your good friends they seem like right dickheads initially (laughs) (laughs) but actually (laughs) they have your best interest at heart that is the truth It's true though, isn't it? Is it? True. It's true. No, like, if you true. your friends will tell I'm you. I'm laughing because I am if there's one thing that I win at on the friendship front, yeah. Is I don't sugarcoat shit. I don't, yeah, you tell people about themselves. Uh-huh. In fact, when you text me like oh, I've had this idea, I need to talk to you about it, I'm like, what do you need to talk me talk to me about it for? You're like, because you're good at telling me that my ideas are shit, yeah. basically. I get I get too excited and then Wayne's the one who kind of like, really, Gem, is that what you want to do? And I think mm-hmm. sometimes you need that. Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of goes on to the point that you kind of have a group of different friends. I think sometimes it's really important to know who's who the right to person to, to talk to at the right time. Yeah. You know the friend who's always jokey, you want to go out and have a laugh in the pub, but then mm-hmm. if there's something serious going on in your life, right. you know that friend you're going to go and talk right. to. Like so I, I know that if I'm... I need a little bit of a nudge in the kind of like, let's think a little bit more positive. I know to come to you. There we go. Because you're always the one that's like, yeah, but think of it this way. And actually the positives are this, 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 yeah, this. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, like I, I get really optimistic with people, whereas I need people on the flip side that I need people to kind of wear that black hat and be mm-hmm. like, 
Gem, that's very optimistic, but where's the reality behind it uh-huh. and stuff like that? So I do think that's a really important point that I think having good friends because they're actually going to tell you about yourself or they're going to know when you're going off off like radar as well. And especially like we said the other day, like sometimes when you see a friend and then you like, oh, they're acting really out of character. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of like sometimes they don't know that they're being that way. Yeah. And so sometimes friends can highlight the fact that actually you're acting weirdly or is something up or they can see when you're not, when you're out of character, maybe there is something you need to talk about mm-hmm. and they can kind of coax it out of you. I know sometimes I can tell through a text if you're pissed off and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, he needs to talk about something or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really good and it, it helps you kind of like work through maybe if you're in your own head, especially. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, so this was an interesting point, Gem, that mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure. Well, the point here is that I'll, I'll read verbatim what you've put. Go for it. Your online friends can steal thoughts and behaviours. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes more to the now, kind of... I get, I get the point, but what's the <laughs> significance of the online friends? I think because we have a lot of like loose tie-in friends on Facebook, so right. just because like they say oh, you can't really have a massive friend, you have close friends. Oh, I think I understand. So you might have like five to ten or even less than that really close friends that like they're the ones that you're best at, it's like mm-hmm. they're really close to you, and then you have the other friends, the 400 other Facebook friends you have. Right who then now share everything. You're not really, they're like loose ties to you, but we spend so much of our time on Facebook that they're having mm-hmm. an influence on us and they're influencing our behaviours. I never go on Facebook. Well, like you're always bitching about something. <laughs> Naturally, you've actually cut down. But no, it's that idea that I think we have so many friends around us and I think there's a massive difference between your Facebook mm-hmm. friends, obviously, because mm-hmm. we just like like anyone, like got old friends from school that you never speak to, mm-hmm. but they're in your view every morning when you switch on your phone and then you're kind of seeing what they're talking about and then suddenly everyone's talking about the same thing. Right. And then you're like, wait, should I be thinking about this thing? Should I be thinking about, oh, everyone's having babies, we spoke about it before, everyone's doing one thing and then suddenly you feel the need that, oh, I should probably be doing that too. Right. And so I think close friends kind of, which is a bit of a point that we have later on, I think close really really close friends are very much aligned with who you are like they've got the same belief systems i said that like the fact that we went to uni together how many uni friends have gone now but because we're kind of extensions of each other's personalities Mm -hmm. that you kind of get on and you stick together and you stay together and i think that's what a lot of people maybe don't have that close bond with people but really a friend should be someone that is basically another but he's just a you it's like a there's so many a reflection of you i think yeah you don't want someone that's identical to you, no. but you want someone that, that has... Your values. The same, yes, the same values, but maybe a different stance on it. Yeah. So, so that you've got it in check. Yeah, 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 Or that person is like a heightened version of something that you really enjoy about yourself mm-hmm. to a different degree as well. Mm-hmm. So they kind of... That's why I hang around with you, because I really enjoy that I'm a bit of a knob. <laughs> <laughs> and I emphasise how knobby you are. Oh, right. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Good recovery there. <laughs> Touche. Well played. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's true. I think I think like you have to understand that you might have thousands of friends or whatever, hundreds of friends on Facebook, but they're not really deep friends, and they're probably a lot of the time you are probably looking at them and bitching about what they're sharing mm-hmm. because they're not on your value system, and then you kind of have to ask yourself like why are they there in the first place and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That was the main point really around that one. Okay, yeah, no, that that's a pretty valid point because it's kind of like I mean, particularly with like the echo chamber of the internet thing, mm-hmm. like nowhere is it more prevalent than like Facebook and mm-hmm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like you've got people sharing opinions and if you've got a lot of people sharing the same viewpoint you end up with a completely unbalanced view yeah. about whatever it is whether it's i don't know politics politics what food is nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> and stuff like that so so yeah so no, and it's already been like proven psychologists have already now proven that really yeah they Go actually proved that on facebook now that um facebook is making people more stuck in the thoughts of that uh, assist that sort of culture on Facebook right. and so that is actually making if you are extreme persons you've got friends who are all very I know anti-immigration you're all getting be, political you're Jesus. gonna <laughs> you're gonna be way more likely to follow that way because uh-huh. now everybody's doing it so it's been normalized in that in that society in that right. culture on that Facebook um, page or whatever your all your friends are on and so you're more like sticking your way in the same way with like entrepreneurs or mm-hmm. anything like that Whatever you're seeing consistently, it becomes, okay, that's a really normal belief. And that's right. just kind of natural. Kind of creates you, a hive mind that. type thing. Yeah, exactly that. Okay. Um, now, this is a really important point. Yes. So I think um, I think people overlook quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think particularly more the other side. But the point is that you're a lot less lonely when you've got some mates around you. Yes. And we know that loneliness um, is fatal. Yes. In many ways. Have we put the Guy Winch episode on YouTube? 
Yes, yes, maybe. We'll have a look. That might need to be done. We'll check that out. But by the podcast. Way happened. back when. <laughs> I mean, this is a long time ago now. When we were just the amateur podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> we did an interview with uh, psychologist Guy Winch. Mm-hmm. I hope he's psychologist. Mm-hmm. I hope that's the wrong, the right job title. I think that was. Yeah, it Hawks. is. Good. Uh, Guy Winch is doing a TED Talk about emotional first aid and loneliness uh-huh. and things like that. And um, like loneliness is like pretty damaging. Definitely. Like... It can cause so much in terms of psychological and overall health issues as well. Um, and I kind of went through a period when, when I moved to London for the first couple of years, despite living in a flat with some amazing people, of mm-hmm. being incredibly lonely. And it just, it becomes this vicious cycle because you end up, when you get lonely, you end up kind of retreating a little bit more mm-hmm. because you're like, oh, well, nobody kind of wants to be around me anyway. So yeah, yeah. then you retreat a little bit more and then um, you end up even more lonely which makes you retreat even more, and then it's just a clusterfuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag clusterfuck. <laughs> oh, God. Definitely explicit this episode. But no, that's Sorry, true. Guys. And I think, I think you made a really important point in there, which was the idea that you can still be around lots of people, uh-huh. but you can be incredibly lonely. You've yeah. got friends who might feel they right. go out socialise, but they don't have those sort of one-on-one deep conversations with their friends, mm-hmm. or they don't feel, feel close enough to someone... <clears throat> Sorry, Fred got dry. They don't feel close enough to someone to have a deep conversation. So, you know what? I feel really shit that I haven't got a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Or I feel like I've let myself go. Or my parent, someone's ill with my family and I just want someone to talk to about it. Yeah. I think there's a massive danger that people don't have that person there. They have these really like loose friendships. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's tough as well because I think a really major point we need to kind of speak about is the idea that like we've brought a lot of our friends through uni experiences. We've brought a lot of our friends through like school and stuff like that. But then there's a lot of people out there who kind of didn't make those friendships. And then there's that idea of, is it a lot harder at a later time in life? Right. And I think some right. people get to that. Or what were your uni friends and what were your school friends? You're like, you know what? When we were talking about values earlier, yeah. your values are nowhere near mine anymore. Yeah, we used to like football at school. Right. And we were friends and we grew up and we had to be together. You lived, you lived around the corner from me. But now you're a totally different person. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. I don't even like what you talk about. You're boring. Just stuff like that. And then suddenly now you think, wow. I'm lonely because I've lost a friendship group. Yeah. But now I need to know that. Or you need to somehow build a new friendship group mm-hmm. around your new values so that you feel more connected and feel like you can open up. Because it's hard to kind of like open up to the guys that you used to go to the pub with and they were always like the louts and always like loud. Yeah, You'd be like, yeah. well, I can't tell you that I'm feeling depressed and that I right. kind of hate myself and all right. those kind of things. Yeah. So it's so important to have those really sort of close friendships. But it's mm-hmm. really, really tough while a lot of people get lonely. And then like you say, if you get into that cycle where you just keep feeling like, well, I'm not going to have that. Everyone else around me is close and you go to parties, everyone seems close. And like you say, you keep telling yourself how a crap of a friend you are. Why would anybody want to hang around me anyway? Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a sap. I'm, no one wants to be around me. I'm unhappy anyway. Stuff like that. So I do think it's a major thing nowadays. Like you could have Facebook friends, but it's a lot more difficult to have like, to create and have, like I think even our age groups as well, I think, we're quite protective now. Once you've got your group of friends, yeah. it's really difficult for someone else to get in. Because you're like, yeah. look, we get on with each other now. Really right? We've difficult. got a solid group. So how's someone on the outside who may be lonely to suddenly come into a group that have known each other for five years, have yeah. deep relationships? Yeah, it's really So I do difficult. think there's a massive struggle with that. I mean, it was when you were at school and the new kid comes into class the first time, they're like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then you punch him in the arm and say, oh, and he goes, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're an art group. You see the blue goldfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but they're, but they're, they're forced to be around you all the time. So uh-huh. they have to, they kind of integrate by osmosis. Mm-hmm. But I think outside of school or the workplace, yeah. I kind of feel like that doesn't happen. Someone's mm-hmm. kind of got to elbow their way in and be like, mm-hmm. you're going to spend time with me whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. And I think it can be a real, real challenge. Real mm-hmm. challenge. Particularly if like, as I've experienced, if you move to a new city, mm-hmm. my God. Yeah. That is hard. Yeah, and you really think about hard. all the amount of people that go to like uni for the first time. And Particularly they... if you're like self employed as well, yeah. like 10 times. Oh, yeah, because you're a total different. But that's why it's so important to find people who are self employed as well. But the, going back to like the kind of uni al- analogy, it's like you get plonked into a room and you've got to hope that you get on with and then uh-huh. everybody is around you. And it's that difficult in a way. And you hear about how many people drop out because they don't make that friendship group straight yeah. away. But then nowadays, I do think it's quite tough to make friends, no, especially at an older age, definitely. Yeah. I think that's something we talk about in the second half about maybe ways that we can actually mm-hmm. make those friends in a not an awkward way or, yeah. Yeah. 
I think so. Is well, there um, a couple of points before we... Yeah, I know. We've kind of... We realised how many notes we had and we just went, let's just pass through the notes. Is there um, one on there that really stands out for you that we just chuck in just before we close this half? Uh, da, 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 da. I think we kind of said a lot of I those. I think we've kind of covered a lot of them, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I think we have. <laughs> Somehow. That's uh, kind of like how we manage that. Uh, the one thing I will say, and it's uh, just to kind of end this half of the episode, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but I think it's so true, is that average of the five people you spend the most time with, mm-hmm. which I'm not sure who that came from. Loads I think of people it might have been Wayne maybe? No, it won't Wayne Dyer. Mm, not Wayne no, Dyer. Okay. I don't think so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, and it's become a cliche, but it's incredibly accurate, mm. I found, because, uh, again, it's kind of what we're saying about sharing values, and your values kind of join up with each other and merge into one. So really just consider who it is that you're... Yeah, and it goes back to that evolutional thing, that evolutionary thing, that well, who you hang around with, you had the same value system as them and you end up becoming very much similar to them. Mm-hmm. Precisely. So Ooh. we'll take a short break. Yes. Thank our sponsor and we'll be back in the jiffy. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well... First of all, we're we alumni, there. we yes. went there, so everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> It's not just about setting up a business, it's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. We're back. I'm still completely energised. You had a massive tea this morning, you should be fine. I've had two you massive... You've got to do the power posture, let the oh, energy flow. Oh. There we go. See, this is why friends don't matter. Oh. There you go. Oh, that really hurt. Yeah, you've got to breathe. Breathe deep. <sighs> there you go. Breathe along with us. I still feel... Foot. <laughs> <laughs> like a bag of smashed crabs. <laughs> That's a great saying. It is, isn't it? I can't take credit for that. Cool. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, Okay, so we're going to talk some actionable stuff. Yes. About how we can... Yeah, I think this is kind of like how to make friends if you're kind of someone who, like we said Mm. earlier, is struggling to make friends. But also I think it's really important that you nourish your current friendships because they can be shallow friendships. And sometimes, like when we, when you actually moved to London, I think we, our friendship went went very shallow. Yeah. Because of the distance, we weren't around each other. I was doing something, you was doing something. And I think it was the podcast that actually brought us together and made us have to kind of see each other, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to make the same comment as well. Band yeah. her. Band her. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No, but I do think it's really important to make sure you nourish your current, mm-hmm. like, friendships. And actually, one thing I did recently, like I was saying, I was at Centre Parks, and we went away with, like, ten of our friends. And it was amazing, because we'd never... I didn't go there, did I? No, it was no. a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Close friends, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. No, my shallow friendships. <laughs> Not those surface ones. <laughs> but yeah, but it was nice just to go away with like 10 of my old like school friends and literally just to really connect with each other. And you kind of just, in those sort of moments when you're away, only focused on friendships and doing things together, mm-hmm. you build such strong relationships with each other. And I think yeah. not enough people have probably the time in the day to actually mm-hmm. have that sort of really intense period of connections with friends and I'm not talking in that way but yeah <laughs> you, I wasn't even thinking that oh okay filthy minded git I'm sorry so um, yeah I think one of the things mm. that I think is a really good move particularly if you are kind of like particularly if you're moving to a new city or whatever find one of your take one of your interests and see if there are any like kind of groups and things regular meetups and things meetup.com meetup.com that's yeah. the number one place to start you can literally just type in what you're into and something will pop up. Witchcraft, whatever. <laughs> witchcraft. There will be a group of witchcraft. I'm not going to judge anyone that's into witchcraft, by mm-hmm. the way. But yes. it was just an odd choice. Astrology. Astrology? It's keeping the same vibe of the old... What's that thing about with the ghosts? Ghost hunting. Paranormal. 
whatever you're into, <laughs> meetup.com is the place to be. We're not sponsored by them. <laughs> so what was you saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I was saying just find a regular group. Find your people. Um, yeah, find your, find your people. Yeah, that's, that's it. We'll sum it up. And that so, is incredible. They meet on a regular basis because... Particularly, it, I mean, even if you're going on, when you're going on your own, it can be quite intimidating the first mm-hmm. time, particularly if it is like something like witchcraft. Um, <laughs> right? Just it, bring your wand. <laughs> and a lock of hair. Very <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, good. I feel drunk and it's morning, I feel like. I am still drunk. Uh, I am drunk. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm sniffing your fumes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Was it vodka? <laughs> no, JD, no, of course. JD, of course. Um, yeah. Not sponsored by them either. Um, but yeah, so it can be quite, quite intimidating going on your own for the first time. But the thing is, kind of like that thing I was saying about when you're at school and you're with new friends and you're forced to see each other, you kind of end up... A bit of osmosis happens yeah. and you kind of just end up finding your people at yeah. that place. It's like when we go to like like talks and stuff nowadays and mm-hmm. then you find like a entrepreneur or someone who you go speak to and just like as soon as you get talking like oh yeah you're like me oh yeah you read these things and, and you're like you feel so at ease when you know that okay yeah, uh-huh. you're nerdy in the same ways that I am so you're admitting you're a nerd which I mean yes. you went to a Star Wars convention so I'm sure you felt right I at did home. that was amazing oh that's fine <laughs> an error popped up on the screen and again and again is it gonna keep Keep going. I think that looks like it's hanging out a little bit. What well, looks like is it? <laughs> that might sound weird to the podcasters, but it is no, actually a it's USB. In. It's a it's USB in. hanging out. Uh, yeah. So put your USB away. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is going so smooth. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I think I think just generally the online interests, the offline interests, are all going to be just ways that you can just kind of meet new people i actually have found that there are a lot i mean i'm very good at at getting chatting to people online and if you are quite shy Mm. and a bit of an introvert that is a really good good way to to meet people that that even that you know they can be still local yeah yeah. it doesn't have just because you're talking to them online doesn't mean that they have to be based in kazakhstan i don't know why i chose do you feel like you still have as deeper relations with them or do you then yeah, because, them, you, yeah. because you Not chat all of to them, them online is it then you meet them outside and then kind yeah, of yeah there's friendship? quite quite a few people yeah. that's been like oh let's just, let's just go for a drink and I guess there's that, no ulterior motive it's just yeah. you you clearly get on yeah, yeah so just I guess that helps as well like you say if you're an introvert person and you speak to them online first you mm-hmm. find these groups because I know in these meetup groups you can actually just see the conversations get chat and then when you meet on the day I guess it's less intimidating because you've yeah. already had a bit of a yeah on the discussion board or something exactly. like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Discussion board. How old school are you? They do on those meetups. They have like at the bottom like a little discussion board where it just pit pops up with bits and pieces. You mean the comments? That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> discussion board. <laughs> the bit where they talk. You're going to get your own anorak. You're yeah. going to start wearing beige soon, aren't yeah. you? I've got the beige shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always want to pick up the camera and just show everyone. I'm going to have to take a photo, just as proof, but he has totally got beige shorts on. I'm barefooted, it's lovely. (laughs) (laughs) So, so yeah, so, I I, yeah, kind of connecting with people online first can be really helpful if you... And I think nowadays, I think online does allow you to find really, like, niche people. You can Mm -hmm. be so specific with your kind of people, but then... Mm -hmm. Like I say, there's always... Oh, actually, I don't want to open up that can of worms. I was going to say, like... Obviously... There's always Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but that would do to get me out of what I didn't want to go into. <laughs> so for now, the bands is out of control in this episode. I'm sweating. All right. Um, another one. Yes. Now, this is a really good one. And this is one that I kind of think I should do more often. Is this the one about barbecues? <laughs> <laughs> no. You do have a point about barbecues on either. Did I make this point? Organised casual go. barbecues. I love that point. That's probably one of my favourite ones on there. Okay, well, let's go with that one since you brought it up. Go on then. Organised barbecues. Yeah. Casual gatherings. But that goes back to that kind of like being intentional with how you're going to kind of nourish your yeah, friendships. Yeah, right. Because I do think like people often say, look, oh, that person hasn't spoke to me for ages and really weird. I was chatting to this person so much and then suddenly they've gone off the radar. And I'm just like, well, why don't you arrange something? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. Like, why don't you just, like, book a group on, like, free co- like, I don't know, cocktail deal, whatever you want, and be intentional with how you're going to mm-hmm. nourish that friendship. Or 
do you actually not like that person? That's why he's kind of fallen apart. Mm-hmm. But it just surprised me that people was kind of get a bit like weirded out when someone stops talking to them. And then they're like, well, just make that bit of effort to then put something on to mm-hmm. kind of reconnect. Then after you've made the effort several times, they're still not talking to you, then maybe <laughs> cut your losses. Yeah, yeah. then they're making a point that they didn't like, want to see you. I've called them 20 times today yeah. and they've just not answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a friend that doesn't want to see you. Probably. I don't want to put that into your minds, but probably. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, just organise events and gatherings with people because you will, you know, obviously it's better to have friends to bring to them. You can't just be like, hey, everyone. Hey, yeah. Facebook. Hey, Facebook. I'm having a house party. Parents on holiday. Everybody come. <laughs> <laughs> Public event. Yeah, yeah. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, just be like, you know, bring friends. I think birthdays are a great opportunity for that as well. Because birthdays is like, if you've got close friends, they kind of are out. Like, I know you was away this week. <laughs> don't want to bring it up. Don't want to bring it up. Not it's, my fault. Stag do, it's fine. <laughs> it was my birthday. I, I, had, a, I had a drink in your honour. Oh, cheers, mate. It's just a few. You had 28's <laughs> worth. <laughs> but yeah, but that's a good point as well. I think nowadays Facebook does kind of show, oh, look, it's everyone, it's his birthday. And then yeah. everyone's like, oh, happy birthday. And then you kind of, most people have a birthday party and then everyone comes for drinks. And that's mm-hmm. a good a good opportunity to actually connect with people. Yeah. 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 Birthdays, barbecues. And I think that actually segues into the point I was going to make. Go for it. Which was the, don't forget about the friends that you've not spoken to in a very long time. Yeah. Like... I know that it can sometimes feel really awkward reaching out to someone you've not spoken to for years. Mm-hmm. Um, but these days, you've got those people on Facebook anyway. Yeah. And they're still your Facebook friends. So just be like, I've not spoken to you for a while. I'm you've just been stalking your uh, school sweetheart for years and then you just send her a message and say, wow, you blossomed. And then... Uh, That's how you get a restraining order. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's funny actually because I actually reached out to an old friend at a prime from my primary school, and you literally speak to them, and mm-hmm. it's literally so exciting. It's like you knew mm-hmm. each other again, and suddenly mm-hmm. you're like chatting as if you've known you've been talking for years. Like I think I hadn't spoke to Skype probably like ten or fifteen years. Mm-hmm. I had a great conversation, and it's just yeah, I think it's fine nowadays to kind of reach back, reach out to people, and I think yeah. you know they're a really good friend as well when you do have that conversation, and it just feels natural again. Yes, there's no awkwardness. You literally yes. feel like I saw you last week, and it's the same kind of conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I just think leverage those older friends that you've not necessarily spoken to for a while and try and meet up and catch up, particularly if it has been a long time because you're yeah. going to have a shit ton to talk about. I also think as well, like for some people, um, if you know what you enjoy doing, whether it's certain sports and stuff, there's sports mm-hmm. teams around. I know like if people are into like CrossFit, the community, those sort of um, sports things have amazing or playing snooker tournaments or football mm-hmm. and stuff like that that's another thing i play like five side football with old, old school friends and i don't see them regularly but we get together maybe every two weeks and have a little football match and again you kind of that's another way of building those yeah. friendships yeah. or you might just join a group and they're looking for an extra player and then suddenly you're in or something like that mm-hmm. yeah exactly so yeah don't forget those old friends yes um and finally and i finally. think this is if you're like looking at like uh, going to a place where you know no one, like a house party, for example, and you know them from years gone and you don't know any of their friends, just yeah. like, just talk about anything. Yeah. Like, don't small like talk it. is so, like, poo-pooed, and oh. I think it's such a useful thing. Yeah. I mean, don't be just like, weather's good. Uh, <laughs> Very British. You know, you've got, to, you've got to kind of, you know, at least engage an interesting conversation. Yeah. Just talk about whatever. And I think as well at this sort of age, like you don't, I think back in the day you want to please everybody, but I like to kind of get out as quick as possible. This is who I am. Because then <laughs> I'd be like, okay, that person's definitely not my kind of person. He thinks I'm a geek or he, we don't connect in any way. Mm-hmm. So I think nowadays you should be, hopefully be at that point where you can just come as yourself and you don't have to make everybody like you because you'll right. find the person that will eventually click with you. Exactly. And then that's where the relationship grows. So like, I think mm-hmm. sometimes people are so afraid of being rejected by somebody that they don't even make the approach. But I think nowadays you can like, eh. Fuck it. Just go and be yourself. Yeah. And you'll find out quickly if that person's going to connect with you. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I think that's kind of it. Is there anything, anything else to add? Yeah, just one last point I wanted to make, and I think it's just standing out to me, is this idea that like Facebook friends are not enough. Like to have mm-hmm. just online friends is not enough. There's a great talk yeah. I listened to, it's TEDx talk, and we'll link to that. But I think as well, don't get lost in this world that you have friends mm-hmm. because you're sharing your updates and everyone's seeing yeah. it. You actually have to have real world conversations go out mm-hmm. have coffee go out meet people go and be part of groups 
because just being behind that computer screen yeah. it's going to totally warp that's not what friendships were yeah that's not a real friendship yeah i i agree and i can say that from experience because because i'm so good at talking to people online when i first moved to london that was most of my my friendships outside mm-hmm. of my flat because i didn't need to go out of my flat because i enjoyed the company of the people i was with so much that mm-hmm. i hadn't made any genuine physical friendships mm-hmm. um and so I was, like, living all these friendships online and then being like, but why do I feel so fucking lonely? Like, I'm mm-hmm. talking to someone yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. Um, and it was just because that online friendship can only... There's, nothing can be face-to-face human interaction. No. At all. So, go out there, work on your friends, make better relationships, make new friends, and have a lot of fun. That's, That's what life's about. That was beautiful. Thank you. We off. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to wrap up there. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And if you are subscribed or not subscribed, hit that thumbs up as well because that boosts us in the rankings, which means more people see it, which is great for the show. And if you're on iTunes, listening on iTunes, on your podcast app. Thank you. Then head on over to, well, thank you, yes. Head on over to iTunes. And uh, leave us a review, five stars or more, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, That's it then. So we shall see you next week for another episode. See you later.